There are ways that are necessary but are not sufficient. Advocacy, fighting, going to the street, closing the factory, blah, blah, but it's not working in the long term. I did a lot of that. What I would do tomorrow is to have a retreat for those CEOs and those workers. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the lecture, I will serve them something that looks like coke, but it will be water from that river. And before they drink it, I said, don't drink it. How come? He said it's water that we took from outside your water pipes in the river. We we'll drink it. Oh no, we we'll drink it. You need to have the experiential interaction with these people. Otherwise, nobody understands what we're talking about. And I tell you, I have given speeches on sustainability for endless time. I will bring them to shanty towns where people are sick because they have polluted the water. And I will say, let me bring your child and this child together to discuss this issue. I am doing that in jails in Colombia, in the, in the maximum security prison of Colombia, where the wardens bring their children and the, and the prison also bring their children. And then this dialogue, not the actors, the principal, but these very important actors, you know, that see their parents in jail or see their parents close to death every day because of security, to talk. I want to hear what the little child of that prisoner is going to tell the other guy you know, about his father punishing the prisoner. Education has been destroyed by just classroom, just computers, cut and paste. We need to get out of the cut and paste in this problem. We need to be together. Let's go and do it. Look at it. Experience it. Without the experience of interdependence, we are going nowhere. I tell the rich, it must be even self-interest for you to have social stability. But don't talk about politics. Forget about politics. There is no capital that survives over the long term, no physical capital, no financial capital in a country with social instability. And this is the dream of the USA now, because it's not so clear where social stability will be able to be kept at a high level at this particular point in time. But in my country, we know, whenever there is social instability, all the investors run away, you know, nobody wants to be in a country with no social stability. That is the human experience. Sustainable development is a human experience. Make education a human experience, and you will have people moving towards sustainable development. Um, so my question is about the different components of capital, right? And I keep having the sense that that that's creating that economic dynamic, right? Things like social capital, cultural capital. The trouble that I have is that it seems to me that in the move to create those categories of capital, it ends up being returning back to the concept that capital is actually a good thing that you would want to protect. And the problem I have is with the word capital, right? I mean, value would be a different word altogether, right? And so the, or asset, exactly. So the problem is that, is that this becomes, um, the trouble for me is that it becomes easily translatable into the free market terms of neoliberalism, which then brings us back to a place where it becomes difficult to argue for those forms of capital that are difficult to measure. And and so that was, you know, the question that I kept having is, is it really useful to translate this into the term the economists or the World Bank can understand, or is it or is it important to say, you know, what the vocabulary that you have used has been detrimental to the overall project here, right? So I'm thinking of things like 
uh, Raoul Fogarty's theory of you know the dependency development model, saying you know the problem is that concept of development always constructs a scenario where one can't develop. And the same thing I would say about the rendering of these terms into forms of capital that will never let us do anything but talk about accumulation right, as a goal. The problem is we don't really want to talk about accumulation of, of capital, right? We want to talk about accumulation of other things that can't be measured. And so that's, yeah, I guess that's the, 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 the question I have is how can we, is it really useful to use the, that vocabulary or is it more important to try to argue in a different, to, to push away, right? Okay. Your, your question has a, a philosophical spin, and I'll be very explicit with you. I think you are trying to go around the establishment. And good luck. <laughs> okay? So I was fired by you the World Bank. Here, so. <laughs> okay, I spent my life there, and I still do. Everyone knows that I'm not from the establishment. And I was fired from the World Bank because I brought human rights into economics. So they said, this is it, finish. No more. Four battles in 29 years, lost the last one. And I think I won it because I won a new life and I'm doing something else. But I am a minority in everything I have written. I'm an ethnic minority in the establishment and I have been in the establishment for 45 years. The question is, how do you do for, look for intermediate openings? Because you can have the best theory in your house, but it doesn't knock any doors. So, sorry if this sounds a, a strong answer, but I'm saying to you, maintain your, your, your purity, but at the same time, things are rolling. I was in the Amazon of Peru, you know, and I asked the indigenous people, why do they cut the trees? Because one has this very sainthood idea of indigenous people. And the, and the people said, because otherwise the whites will take it before us. So if we are all in that mode, we are in the tragedy of the commons. But that's a reality. I cannot go there with my philosophy and say, look, you know, you're an indigenous person, you know, this holistic reality, uh, and you use all the new age language, it doesn't get you anywhere. Secondly, there is a tremendous danger of the New Age language, that everyone is using it without knowing what it is. Nobody is willing to put their life to experience that language. So I call it capital, and I'm fighting to find a, a room for which I can. But I'm not a capitalist. And I don't think anyone is confusing me with a liberal economist. By the way, Raul Previch, professor, you know, uh, Fernando Cardoso, who wrote with Enzo Faleto, the theory of, you know, dependency, who then became president of Brazil, very conservative, you know, and I remember talking to him. He came uh, running away from dictatorship in Brazil. He didn't even speak Spanish. He was my professor in sociology. New language, total new language. To find him speaking this language again, I think that if there are terms that are frontier terms, have a look at some of the stuff that I have written. But we have to be careful about language and communication stuff. Because you might make of your language a fact that will very soon disappear. And to me, sustainable development is not a fact. For example, I am against the term develop. So I could come here and say, professors, don't teach sustainable development. Your department is worth nothing. Let's <laughs> call it sustainable consciousness. Oh, this guy is thinking, he's a guru, you know, he thinks he's not coming here. You know, it's very tough to stand in a podium with a diverse audience and begin to use languages that nobody wants to really swallow. But I just said, let's look at the human conscious and the approach to sustainable, and that's a lot. For many people here, it's a lot. I just see their, their electric bodies, you know? 
saying, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> that is a lot. For me, in an economic institution, I lost a lot of promotion because using natural capital. That land was something that this to stay. It's reproducible, you can invest. But your point is very well taken. Some people might say, hey, capital. Like uh, in one of my last books, I wrote about social competitiveness. And a congressman of country X from the Communist Party said, you are crazy. The only competitive that exists is economic competitiveness. You are making this language. Okay. But your point is well taken. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I'm pretty interested, too, in these, uh, these different types of, of capital that you're talking about. Um, and I was, I was wondering if you could if you can give an, an example of each one. And uh, I feel like what you're offering is um, kind of a refinement or a progression uh, in the concept of capital. And uh, I think that's, that's pretty needed. And uh, got a lot of gratitude to you for offering that. And um, I was I was wondering also if you could say more about that um, that concept of capital as you uh, as you see. Physical capital. Yeah. Financial capital. Money. Human capital. You. Um, Natural capital, our oceans, uh, institutional capital, then state, um, cultural capital, my heritage, knowledge, spiritual capital, in self. My mission on earth. 